Hi everyone, in this video we'll be looking at The Absolute Sandman, which is Neil Gaiman's 75 issue Sandman run collected in DC Vertigo's Deluxe of Deluxe Absolute Editions, which feature very high quality printing, binding and reproduction. If you're interested in an introduction to Sandman, check out my What is the Sandman video. As mentioned in that video, Sandman ran for 75 issues from 1989 onwards, and these four volumes collect all 75 issues in handsome hardcover oversized formats. Each volume of the Absolute Edition comes in a slipcase and slips out like this backwards so that the spine is showing out of the slipcase. We can see the hardcover edition is fairly oversized, which is to say that it is much larger than the original comics or the collections that followed. For comparison, we can take a look at issue one and how it measures up to the Absolute Edition. The cover is in faux leather. I don't think it's real leather, but it looks very similar. It's handsome binding with ridges on the spine over here and gold lettering. You can see a beautiful color reproduction frontispiece sort of on the cover over here. And again, gold lettering. You've also got embossing within the cover where you can see the symbols that also show up on the spine. And these symbols are different for each of the four volumes. I should mention that there is a fifth Absolute Edition as well and a sixth uh, Absolute Edition due out soon as of uh, the making of this video. But these are the four that contain the original 75 issue series and these are the four that I own. So alongside the large size of the Sandman Absolute Editions and the slipcase, uh, we also have in the early volumes a recoloring of Sandman from the original run. This is because the original run was at a certain point of time where printing technology as well as schedules made certain things not possible to put on paper. Either they couldn't be done physically or there wasn't enough time or there wasn't enough budget. So the coloring, especially in the early issues, is something that has been redone to more modern satisfaction today. Opening this book, we find the pages of very high quality art paper, unlike the newsprint, uh, almost parchment like paper of the 1980s, 1990s, in which Sandman was published. We've got end papers, we've got new art, we've got an introduction, everything that gives it a more deluxe feeling uh, and approaching of the material as something to be celebrated. Over here, we can see the cover of the first issue without any of the lettering. Here it is for comparison. So without Sandman, Master of Dreams and the creator credits over here, you get to see the full picture. And again, reproduced at this size, you get to appreciate details that you may not have noticed before. Every volume of the Sandman Absolute Editions comes with a lovely bookmark attached into the book, which allows you to pick up where you last were very easily. Again, the color reproduction over here is quite different from what we had in the originals. So let's take a quick look at the colors and see how they're different. From the very first page onwards, the difference is quite stark. Here is issue number one, placing them side by side we can see that there is the more modern gradiency uh, in the sky over here. These bolder, more primary sort of colors have been subdued. Uh, there are more browns instead of blues and reds, uh, more earth tones, I think. And these statues that were blue in the original printing are now this sort of gray. Again, the purple wall behind it is more of an off-white wall. You can definitely see brown brick coloring over here, which was all purple at that time, allowing the foreground to really stand out against that. And you can see that this gray jacket has become this brown jacket. 
this remains more or less unchanged but because of the changes in the background including the window of the building over here which was full of blue uh, which looks like the sky so it might almost look transparent has been replaced with something that's a little more modern a little more realistic again the backgrounds over here and here are different shades you can see the absence of a lot of the reds becoming more muddy browns and just becoming a lot more like a modern comic even though the art in the right stay exactly the same. You also see depth and shading added to the little caption boxes which continue to be in the style that they were but now feel more like yellowed paper. The bottom image and the top image sort of mirror each other and you can see the repeat of the coloring changes creating a different aspect when you look at this. Perhaps most importantly the blue around it had a stark cut over here, which was blue over here and brown over here. And this isn't, you know, it's not really clear whether this is part of this ground or not, because it's all the same shade. Over here, you've got the blue slowly grading into white, and the brown is quite distinct from here with the black shadow being the difference. So it doesn't create any sort of confusion. On the next pages, we can see a similar continuation of this recoloring where brighter, bolder things have been made more subdued. The foreground stand out a lot, the shapes stand out a lot, and it particularly makes a difference in differentiating, you know, the foreground from the background. Again, over here, the man's suit over here fades into the bookshelf. It's a little muddied. You're not really sure what you're looking at because of the similarity over there. The differentiation here with the brown makes the man as well as the chair really stand out. Similarly, you can notice someone behind him over here, which, you know, is, I, I don't even know if that person is here because I can't see it. Yes, okay, now I can see it. But this man, I would say, was almost invisible in the first issue. You just, I, I never saw this figure until this recoloring. So it definitely has it definitely has an improvement from the point of view of readability and what you're looking at. Although you could say that some of the charm is lost and a lot of reading a comic from 1989 or 1990 would be about this experience. That's a personal aesthetic choice. I don't want to get into spoilers for those who haven't read it, but this is the way it continues and the coloring changes is one of the reasons why the Absolute Editions also got the sort of attention that they did. In fact, today, all of the trade paperbacks have been um, re-edited to include this recoloring from the Absolute Editions and you can no longer get these colors unless you've got an old trade paperback or unless you've got the original single issues. So there you have it. These are the absolute editions of Sandman, volumes 1, 2, 3, and 4. Volume 1 contains issues 1 through 20, and so on, broken up over here. In addition to the comics, you also have, at the end of the book, a lot of extras. And in volume 1, the extras are really interesting because they give you a sense of how the series started, how the series developed, because it contains, among other things, Neil Gaiman's pitch for the series. It's got his initial proposal right here. It's got some early sketches and attempts at what Morpheus would look like. It's got a lot of notes on each of the characters and the look and feel of the comic. It's got sketches from those early days. It also has this summary of the story so far that was part of issue number eight. If you're interested in looking at the first 20 issues, check out my video for issues one through 20. You also have notes and the original script for A Midsummer Night's Dream, which is part of the Dream Country collection, as well as sketches and drawings by Charles Vess. So along with the oversized format, the beautiful binding and attachments like the bookmark and the recoloring uh, of the older issues of the ones that were less sophisticated uh, than the later ones, 
and the extras that are featured over here, the Sandman Absolute Edition is a wonderful addition to the libraries of comics lovers and fans. And if you haven't read the Sandman, this is not a bad way to start. Although I will have to say that given the weight and the heft of these books, um, they do present a bit of a challenge. You've got to find a good chair and you've got to have the right support. This isn't obviously something you can read lying down in bed. But nevertheless, the quality of the content and the production make the Sandman Absolute Editions a wonderful thing to own.